poem, lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey. Woodsworth establishes what is now known as the Romantic Bible. He is known as the father of Romanticism and for a good reason. We will now read excerpts from the poem which was written for his sister Dorothy after a revisit to the Wide River. Due to the large size of the poem, we will read lines 22 to 49 and 67 to 111. Guys, you're going to love this. Nope, nope, nope. These are lines 22 to 49. These beauteous forms, through a long absence, have not been to me as is a landscape to a blind man's eye, but oft, in lonely rooms, and mid the din of towns and cities, I have owed to them. In hours of weariness, sensations sweet, felt in the blood, and felt along the heart, and passing even into my pure mind, with tranquil restoration, feelings too of unremembered pleasure, such, perhaps, as have no slight or trivial influence on the best portion of a good man's life his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. Nor less, I trust, them I may have owed another gift of aspect more sublime, that blessed mood, in which the burden of the mystery, in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened, that serene and blessed mood, in which the affections gently lead us on, until the breath of this corporeal frame, even and even the motion of our human blood, Almost suspended, we are laid asleep in body and become a living soul. While with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. Now we are going to read lines 67 to 111. I came among these hills, when like a roe I bounded o'er the mountains, by the sides of the deep rivers and the lonely streams wherever nature led, or like a man flying from something that he dreads than one who sought the thing that he loved. For nature then, the coarser pleasures of my boyish days, and their glad animal movements all gone by, to me was all in all. I cannot paint what then I was. The sounding cataf cataract haunted me like a passion. The tall rock, the mountain, and the deep and gloomy wood their colors and their forms were then to me an appetite, a feeling, and a love that had no need of a remoter charm, by thought supplied nor any interest, unborrowed from the eye that time is past, and all its aching joys are now no more, and all its dizzy raptures. Not for this faint eye, nor more nor murmur, other gifts have followed, for such loss I would believe abundant recompense. For I have learned to look on nature, not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but hearing oftentimes the still, sad music of humanity, nor harsh nor grating, though of ample power, to chasten and subdue. And I have felt a present that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean, and the living air, and the blue sky, and in the mind of man. A motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Therefore, am I still a lover of the meadows and the woods and mountains, and of all that we behold from this green earth, of all the mighty world of eye and ear, both what they half create and what perceive, well pleased to recognize in nature and the language of the sense, the anchor of my purest thoughts the nurse, the guide, the guardian of my heart and soul, of all my moral being. So, this poem was written during the beginning of the Romantic era, due to Wordsworth being the father of Romanticism, while also being set during the revolutionary milieu, which is coincidentally also the same time of Napoleon, the, the Napoleonic Wars, and that did not go so well for him. The, the poem turns out to be revolutionary in itself because it was a rebellion against the contemporary attitudes and behavior due to the simplicity of the poem in contrast to the Enlightenment thinking that preceded the time period. This poem can also be described as a kind of romantic Bible, but Wordsworth also used it to convey his belief in pantheism, which is the idea that God exists in all things, with the main elements of God, the human mind, and nature. So this poem shows Wordsworth's transformation from his early life, from where he saw nature, just how it was, and unrelated to the other aspects of life, to later in life where he discovered pantheism and the connection between nature 
and human life. And he also mentions that after five years, he is sensitive to how nature stirs his soul like a hot wood grit. He says that? <laughs> the poem is split into paragraphs rather than distinct stanzas, which is following the form of a letter, an actual letter, because it has enjambed lines and flows naturally. You know what else flows naturally? Yeah. <laughs> The beginning of the poem is Woodsworth's description of the area after not seeing it for five <laughs> In the central section of the poem, Woodsworth talks about his past visit to the Abbey and how it may have changed him as a person. He distinguishes his current life in the city, which is loud and dull, to the calm and quiet of his experience with nature. Woodsworth is revitalized by the feelings of unremembered pleasure that he once felt in his youth. By the end of the poem... You're probably going to be asleep. No. <laughs> by the end of the poem, Woodsworth directly addresses his sister as he sees the youth that he once was in her. Woodsworth's feelings about returning to the place he loves comes full circle. The romantic characteristics most present in the poem are nature, feelings, the past, and the supernatural. Nature is infused into the poem as it is present in almost all parts of the poem, and the author professes his love for it. He also makes his feelings known by recounting how he could not survive without remembering the feeling of nature while he dwelt within the city. The characteristic of the path is seen through finally realizing the idea of pantheism. And lastly, the supernatural is the last aspect of romanticism found in this poem as it reflects the spiritual ideas and philosophy that Wordsworth espouses during the poem. In the poem, Woodsworth uses unrhymed iambic pentameter, which is an unstressed stress pattern. However, when there is rhyme, Woodsworth intentionally placed it there to provide emphasis. Sometimes the rhyme is not in the next line, but is separated by a few lines. Woodsworth includes many literary devices in his poem, Tintern Abbey. One example of diction is the repeated use of the word five in lines one through two. Woodsworth states, five years have passed, five summers with a length of five long winters. In this case, five is used to represent the passing of time. It describes how long it had been since Woodsworth had visited the Wye River, as well as introduced the concept of past versus present, and the different views of nature he had during those two time periods. Overall in the poem, Wordsworth chooses to use everyday words, words that are accessible to the average Joe. The syntax of the poem supports the diction. He uses common sentences, which helps to create that average Joe feeling. The whole poem is filled with imagery of nature. Woodsworth provides detailed descriptions of the Wye River after he goes to see it again. For example, in lines 14 to 19, he states, Once again, I see these hedgerows. Hardly hedgerows, little lines of sportive wood run wild. These pastoral farms screen to the very door, and wreaths of smoke send up in silence from among the trees. There are many similar descriptive passages throughout the poem that work to create vivid images of the nature that Woodsworth sees. The imagery of nature works to create a tranquil and melancholy tone. Woodsworth sees nature as an escape and a calm that is contrary to the hustle and bustle of the city. There is a simile in line 24 that states, These beauteous forms, through a long absence, have not been to me as a landscape to a blind man's eye. Woodsworth simply uses this simile to describe how he hasn't seen the Wye River and the landscape of the Wye River in a very long time. Tintern Abbey is a poem that Woodsworth wrote for his sister Dorothy. Dorothy represents Woodsworth's youth and his past self that had not discovered pantheism yet. By using Dorothy, he provides another example of how pantheism has changed his view of nature. Since Tintern Abbey is written with basic language, there are not many other complex literary devices. Like rhyme, when there is a complex literary device, it is used to provide emphasis. Wordsworth wants the poem to be everyday language, since it is a romantic poem which were often written as a reaction to the Age of Enlightenment. To sum up, Tintern Abbey is a poem by Wordsworth that is like the Romantic Bible. The poem contains almost all the basic characteristics of the Romantic Age. This whole poem is about Wordsworth's discovery of pantheism and how God exists in all things. This concept becomes a sort of religion for him and he uses it in all his future poems. 